All right, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? 7.2, similarity. All right, so here is the definition for similarity. Similar polygons have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. As you can see, we have two triangles, and one is much smaller than the other one, but they do share a lot of um, properties, and so we're going to go through those properties right now. Um, their sides are proportional, so if you compare one side to the other side, they should be proportional, which means they make a nice ratio. And then the angles are always equal. So if you match up each of the angles, they are always equal to each other. All right, let's do an example. The first part of the homework asks you to um, do a statement of proportionality. So all you have to do is list all the angles that are congruent and then write the ratios of the corresponding sides. All right, so if we just start off by uh, listing the angles that match up, angle A matches up with angle W. There it is, here's angle A and here's angle W. You match them up. Now, how did I choose A and W? You have to look at the given. If it gives you the first position is A, you have to match it up with the first position for W. And then you go all the way around. Angle B matches up with angle X. Angle C matches up with angle Y. Angle D matches up with angle Z. And then angle E matches up with angle V. So it's pretty easy. You just have to match the angles up. But it also says you have to um, write the ratios of the corresponding sides. So when they ask you to do that, you just have to um, write the ratios of the sides. And here they all are. Um, side AB is in a ratio with side WX. And then I just go all the way around. It's equal to BC over XY equals to CD over YZ is equal to DE over ZV is equal to EA over VW. So I just basically go around the whole pentagon and just compare the sides. All right, so the angles are equal. The angles are equal, but the sides are proportional. All right, so that's very important for you to remember. You just set the angles equal, but the sides you have to make a little fraction. Okay, here's an example. I give you two what looks to be like rectangles and I ask you if they are similar or not. Okay, and so what we do is we just compare. We try to match up the sides. So 51 would match up with the 17. <clears throat> and then we always reduce our fractions. 51 over 17 reduces. 3 to 1. I know that's a really tough number to recognize. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and compare the 39 to the 13 and reduce. And guess what? They both reduce down to the same number. That same number has a very special name. It is called the scale factor. All right, so when the sides reduce down to the same number and the scale factor is the same, we say that these two rectangles are similar. And there's the, si the symbol for similar. It's the little squiggly line. All right, so you can put a squiggly line in between them. Okay, so just comparing the sides. Here's another one. Are these two triangles similar? So first, we're just going to compare the sides. Let's compare 20 to 10. You want to try to compare the big side to the big side, the small side to the small side, and the medium side to the medium side. Okay, so if I compare the 20 to the 10 and reduce it, it is 2 to 1. Let's go ahead and compare the 16 and the 8. Look at that. It's also 2 to 1. So, so far, so good. But then look what happens when we do the 28 and the 15. It doesn't even reduce. It doesn't reduce down to 2 to 1. 
So unfortunately, because it didn't reduce down to the same scale factor, these are not similar. <clears throat> All right. And then the next part of your homework, they give you a couple of choices and they ask you which two are similar. And if you look at the numbers, you can clearly see that a three by five rectangle and a nine by 30 rectangle, if you reduce these numbers, it'll go down to this. So when that happens, then we can see that these two are the similar ones and not this one. Okay. Moving on. Ooh, I jumped too fast. All right. <clears throat> We're going to do proportions next. So it says that these two shapes are similar. There is the giant symbol in the middle. When they are similar, you can go ahead and compare the sides. We're going to go ahead and do x compares to the 7, and then 15 compares to the 4. And when you do these comparisons, you want to make sure that you stay consistent. If you're going to go large to small, you have to continue that process throughout the whole problem large to small. And it doesn't matter. You can go from small to large as long as you're consistent the whole way through. All right, and then from here, you guys should know how to solve proportions nice and easily. Cross multiply. <clears throat> Let me erase some of this. And then simplify. X equals 26.25. All right, let's do another example. Here we have what looks like a trapezoid, but I don't know if it's a trapezoid or not because um, <clears throat> none of the parallel lines are drawn in. But it doesn't matter. It does tell you that these two quadrilaterals are similar. There is a similar symbol. <clears throat> you have to solve for A and B. All right. Uh, and you can't do both at the same time. So let's go ahead and do A first just because it's first in the alphabet. So you have to kind of figure out what side does A match with. And it looks like A matches with 36. So I'm going to put that as a fraction. Ooh, 35, I meant. And then you have to match another side. And it looks like I chose 8 and 30. And then there's my proportion. Cross, multiply, and solve. A equals... 3.5. Let's do the same thing with B. We've got to ask ourselves, what side does B correspond to? And it looks like it corresponds to the 30, uh, the 45. And then comparing it to another set, 8 and 30 again, cross multiply and solve. Not too bad, not too bad. And then we have a little bit of algebra, which isn't too difficult. Just compare the sides. The x minus 2, uh, the x minus 12 compares to the 2, and then the 20 compares to the 5. Set up your proportion. There's the x minus 12 with the 2, and then the 20 with the 5. And then again, remember, it does matter. You can, you, if you're going to choose to go from big to small, then definitely always go big to small, big to small. But you can always do small to big as long as you're consistent, small to big. Okay, and then this is pretty easy. Proportions, cross multiply. Ooh, that's supposed to be a parentheses, a little mm, typo there. Distribute <clears throat> and solve x equals 20. Let's do one more example, but the last one's kind of a long one. All right, so we are given two similar isosceles trapezoids, which means the small trapezoid will match up with the big trapezoid because they're similar. Let's go ahead and find the scale factor. So the scale factor is again is matching one side to another side. And it looks like this is the one side that would match perfectly to this side. Remember, this is the long 
side of the trapezoid, we're going to go ahead and match it with the long side of this trapezoid, 5 to 12. And then again, um, I decided to go from small to big in this problem, and so stay consistent. Ooh, this one says solve for W, X, Y, and Z. So we're going to have to solve for all of those, one at a time, though. Let's go ahead and solve for W first. Here's W. It's an angle. So when it's an angle, you don't have to set anything up. You just simply have to match. W matches up with 105. Easy. Um, let's go ahead and solve for the next letter. X. So X is a side, so let's compare them. X compares to the 7. We have to set up a proportion. And then there it is. X compares to 7. And when we want to set up the proportion, we're going to go with the scale factor, the 12 to the 5. But now notice, I switched it. Now I'm going from big to small. But still, big to small, big to small. Clean that up a little bit. Use your cross multiplication skills. Solve it out, you get x equals 16.8. Done with the x. Let's do y. y is an angle. For angles, you just have to match them up. It looks like y matches up with 75. There it is. Done with the y. And z. Here's z. It's a side, so you have to set up some proportions. Z plus 3 matches up with the 9, and then use the scale factor 5 to 12. <clears throat> Cross multiply, do a little bit of math, and solve for Z. There it is, 0 0.75. We got all of them. Okay, so solving one at a time, not bad at all. And clean up a little bit of stuff. Ooh. This is asking you to find the perimeter of the smaller trapezoid. Perimeter means add all the way around. Remember, it's isosceles, so this side is also 7. You have to take the z and plug it into here in order to add all the way around. And if you do that, you get about 22.75 units. That's what I'm used for. Look at this. It's asking for the perimeter of the large one. So that's the same way. You just take the x, plug it into here. And remember, it's also for this side too, because it's isosceles. Add all the way around. You should get 54.6 units. Let's see what this last question is asking. What is the scale factor of the perimeter of the smaller to the larger trapezoid? OK, so it is asking for the scale factor of the perimeter. So basically, you're comparing the small perimeter to the large perimeter. And if you put it over a fraction, I mean, put it as a fraction, and then use your calculator. You should get 0 0.4166666 goes on forever. And here is what I'm trying to get at. If you were to put 5 divided by 12, our original question, into your calculator, you would actually get 0 0.4166666. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and that is going to be eventually one of the properties we're going to learn. If we take each part and compare to get a scale factor, it turns out that if we add them all up and compare all of the added parts, we still get the same scale factor. Kind of cool. All right, that is all we have for today. Go ahead and start your homework.